In this video, I'm going to build a brand new PLA profile for my K1 Max. I'm using Orca Slicer, and it's a simple process. And the nice part is that Orca Slicer has the tools built right in. Now, I use this process for each filament type and nozzle size I use. For my Ender machines, I still like Cura, and I follow a similar process for building my profiles to get the quality prints I'm looking for. Speaking of quality, this video is sponsored by PCB Way. I'll tell you more about them later in the video. Now, if you do have a downloaded default slicer profile, consider it a foundation to build upon to perfect the pro uh, profile. Do your own calibrations, your printer, and your filament. This will take your prints to the next level. Now, all filament is not created equal. Even though they might be the same type of filament, PLA from one manufacturer is not the same as PLA from another manufacturer. I'm Bill, and this is Pushing Plastic. The first thing I want to do is make sure I'm set up for the printer I'm working. I want to do this for the K1 Max. I do have uh, bamboo, so I want to make sure I'm not picking those. So I'm going to make sure I'm K1 Max. A starting profile, I'm going to use the Creality Hyper PLA. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this for the filament I'm actually working with. Now, I'm going to call this Free Mover PLA because that's the brand of filament I'm working with. So I'll go ahead and I have a brand new uh, filament profile. The next thing I want to do is I want to make sure I preserve the original printer settings. So I'm going to come over here. And I'm also going to change the name on this to K1 Max. I'll save that great now the next thing I'm going to do is come over to speed and I'm going to go to Creality print and I'm going to let's say borrow their settings so I have it set up for well you know what let's go to the hyper what I want to do is get the speed settings so I'm going to come in here and I I'm going to transfer manually all of these speed settings to my profile in Orca. So I'll do that and then we'll really get started. Now that I transferred all my speed settings from Creality Print, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do some calibration work here. I want to open up my Free Mover Filament profile. The first thing I'm going to do is change my flow rate to 1. I always do that. I always start at 1 or in Cura 100%. And I adjust from there. So I'll save that. And I'm going to Calibration. And there's all kinds of cool tools in here. We're going to put them to use starting with a temperature tower. We'll be asked for a filament type. In this case, PLA. It's already checked. And the starting temp range of 230. Uh, I'm going to change that to 240. And I'm going to end at 200. And I'll click on OK. And there it puts us a temperature tower. All the temperatures are listed on each section. And if you watch your printer, you'll see the, the temperatures decrease. So we'll slice this. And we'll go ahead and we'll print this and see what we got to work with. Based on what I'm seeing, 230 degrees looks to be the best for me. Now, remember, I'm not looking for perfection. I'm looking for what's best. We'll get perfection as we tune some of the other settings. So what I'm going to do is come in to my uh, filament profile, and I'm going to change this 240 to 230. And right now, I'm going to leave that for both first layer and other layers and I'm going to go ahead and save that now that I have my temperature all dialed in the next thing I'm going to work on is flow rate so let's go up to calibration once again go to flow rate 
and we're going to select pass one and that's it let's go ahead and slice this and we'll print and see how we do from what i'm seeing here i'm like number five is the smoothest what do you think let me know in the comments now what we do is we come back to our profile we're working on and we use the formula of the current flow ratio multiplied by 100 plus the best in my case five and divide that by 100. so what i'm looking at is a new flow ratio of 1.05 and we'll come in to our uh, filament profile and we'll update that do not forget to save it because it's important to do the next step we'll save that and then we're going to go right in to start a new project no, I don't want to save any of that and we're going to hit calibration flow rate again and this time we're going to do pass two and you can see we have 10 blocks this time and again all we have to do is slice and print let's see how we do so let's get our results updated here with our filament editor and our formula will be the same which is the current flow rate times 100 plus the best of what we printed in this case minus 2 divided by 100 so that is giving me 1.029 for my final flow rate I'm going to go ahead and enter that remember to save again you'll want to keep those values Update. I think we're on our way to making some good quality prints here speaking of quality let me take a few seconds to tell you about PCB way PCB way is more than printed circuit boards PCB way offers CNC machining 3d printing and injection molding ordering is a breeze on their user-friendly website while you're visiting their website enter their six project design contest with categories for both electronic and mechanical design whether it's prototypes or production runs pcbway.com has you covered let's go to pressure advance now here we have a bunch of options I'm going to use the direct drive DDE direct drive extruder or you have a Bowden you pick which one you want I'm direct drive I'm going to use the line pack method that's going to draw a series of lines for me I'll hit OK and we'll see PA test let's slice this kind of a different change there isn't it now before you do this you probably want to make sure you're getting good first layers to start with uh, I believe you want to turn the bed mesh leveling on which I already have so I'm going to go ahead and print this out and we'll select which one is the best for us okay what we have here is a series of printed lines and we're going to look to see which one is the best now up at the top we have a marker for where the acceleration starts and where it stops they are decelerated what we want to do is find out which one of these lines has the least amount of breakup in obviously none of these up here are any good and when you get down here at the bottom you'll notice a bunch of blobs see some of those blobs up here at the top as well the acceleration point but over here at the deceleration point you'll see a lot now what I'm looking at this line right here 0 0.04 I'm thinking that's what is looking the best and that's what I'm going to go with Let's now I'm going to update the profile just like we've been doing I'm going to click on edit preset I'm going to come down enable pressure advance I'm going to change the 0 0.02 default to 0 0.04 and I'm going to save it now if you don't want to use the pressure advance just leave this disabled and you won't even have to do it the next thing I'm going to do is a retraction so we're going to come up calibration once again and we'll hit retraction test we're going to start our retraction length at zero and we're going to work up to two millimeters and we're going to change every 0.1 millimeters let's hit OK and then we have our tower you can see the markings for each uh, section and we'll slice this up and let's send it to the printer and go 
Here we have our printed results. What we want to do is start counting up sections from the bottom. And when we come to the first one that's clean, that's going to be our number. So I'm looking right about in here at number nine. Yeah, I cheated. I already took a look at it before I put it in front of the camera. I'm going to take nine spaces, multiply that by 0.1, which is going to give me 0.9. So now I'll go back and I'll enter that into my profile and save it. Now to update the retraction on our profile, this time I'm not going to the material, I'm coming up to the machine. I'm going to click on that, going over to the extruder, and I'm just going to come down to retraction length. I'm already at 0.8. It'd probably be fine there, but I'm just going to go with what I ran with and update it to 0.9. We'll save that. Hit OK. And now we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so this next test, it's pretty important. It's the maximum volumetric speed setting. And what it does, it creates a manager for the maximum amount of filament that the slicer will attempt to push through your uh, hot end. Now, if, especially if you're using generic brand filament, what's on the box or the spool might not be right. So even if you're using a quality brand name, it's always a pretty good idea to check this out. So let's get to it. Let's go to calibration. We're going to go to more and we're going to pick max flow rate. I'm going to accept the defaults. And we'll slice this. Now, you might want to change your color to flow so you can see what's going on here. As it gets higher up, we're going to see a quality drop off. And what we want to do is determine the measurement from the start to where the quality starts to diminish. So let's print this and see how we do. So what we're looking for here is where the layers would separate. Uh, they just wouldn't stick to each other. Any anything bad in there and we're also looking for the discoloration like going from um, say shiny to matte matte to shiny however you want to call it and all my layers seem to be sticking pretty good would be along the x-axis on the y not really liking the looks of that but what I am noticing in my x is roughly in this area and I hope the camera's picking it up and see a little bit of a change in the shade. So I'm going to use that to start with. Well, period. <laughs> it's going to be my indicator. I'm going to make sure my calipers are zeroed out. I'm going to measure that distance. I'm looking at roughly. 23.69 and that's all right now for the fun math part what we want to do is we want to take the starting point that we got from our dialog box when we set up the test which was five and we're going to add that to what was measured in this case 23.69 and multiply that by the steps that we used for our test also in the dialog box so it's going to be 23.69 times 0 0.05 and then we'll add five to it. And I'm coming up with 16.845, and we'll enter that into our profile. And we'll come down here to the volumetric speed limitation. And the max volum volumetric speed, wow, 200 in there. And we're taking it to 16.845. We're gonna save this. And I'm going to run a couple test pieces. I'll start with the 20 millimeter cube and see how we do. Now, to see how these prints came out, I did the usual 20 millimeter calibration. Let's check the measurements. X. What do you even? Y. 
20.08. That's not too bad. I'll take it. But what if it was a 50 millimeter calibration printed with the same profile? Let's see how it measures up. All right, that was pretty good. The 20, 20 and 50 millimeter cubes did pretty well. Like they say, go big or go home. Let's print and measure up a 100 millimeter calibration, how it stacks up. All three cubes, different sizes, all printed with the same filament with good results. Now, you're one of the guys that wants to see what happens when the cube is printed to 200 millimeters. You'll have to print it on your own. I got more important things to do, like print giant green army men for no particular reason. Now, is the profile complete? No but it's a good solid foundation to build upon. And it's to the point where if I just click, I'll get good results based on the printer and the filament combination. I'll continue to make changes and tweaks to improve upon it. I hope you found this information useful. If you did, hit that like button and let me know down in the comments. Mash that bell so you'll be notified about new content in the future. Live your life one layer at a time. And if you haven't done it yet, please consider subscribing.